hello everyone and welcome to ulogic classes youtube channel in today's video we'll solve the maths part of the all india open mock which was a completely free mock so if you have not yet actually attempted the mock the link to the same would be in the description and i encourage you to attempt that mock first and then come back to this video to watch the solutions all right let's get started let's do this so a die is rolled twice what is the probability that the sum of numbers on the two faces is five so we have six numbers on a dice from all the way from one to six so the cases wherein the sum of the numbers on the two faces can be five will we can have one on the first dice four on the second we can have two on the first and three on the second and these are the only cases and the thing is that you can actually reverse them so you will have four one and three two so like this you have four cases all right now your total uh as i actually suppose that you know a little bit about uh, permutations and combinations so you have two dices so the way to choose one number uh, from one dice will be six c one and because you're rolling the die twice you can just say that you have two dice so it will be 61 into 61 over we have four numbers so it will be one two and three four so we will have four this will be the answer so yeah i'll just calculate it uh, 61 is just six it will be 36 four over 36 it will be nothing but one over nine so yeah this will be our answer let's move to the second question 25 workers were employed to complete a compound wall in 12 days again i suppose that you must be knowing the concept of chain rule this is a straight and a very basic question from the concepts of chain rule so 25 workers were employed to complete a compound wall in 12 days and five workers left after working for four days so the total work would have been completed in 12 days but because now four days work has already been completed so 25 workers would actually complete that work in eight days but here it says that five workers left so this work has to be completed by 20 people so it'll in turn be five four two so the work would be uh, i'm doing something wrong days yeah 25 people will complete in eight days the job is to be completed by 20 people so it will be yeah i was doing correct in the first turn as well so this work actually took 10 days but prior we had also worked for four days so in turn we have actually worked for 14 days so our, our answer would be 14 days let's go ahead so in the garden there are eight rows and 10 columns of papaya tree the distance between the two trees is two meters and a distance of one meter is left from all sides of the boundary of the garden we have to find the length of the garden so we don't actually need these rows rows are actually like this and the columns go like this all right so we don't need these for the length this would have been used if we were asked to find the area or the breadth we only need the columns so because we have columns going all the way from the first column to the 10th column we would have nine spaces in between of them i'll also draw it if you want me to three four five six seven eight nine and ten as you can see we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine spaces and the distance between two trees is two meters and we have nine spaces so between the space between the trees the total would be 18 meters but we have actually also left a space of one meter on both the sides so one meter from here and one meter from here so we'll add two meters in it and we would actually have 20 meters as the length of the garden these questions are quite basic if you know the concept a man can draw 14 kilometers in still water in the stream flowing the speed of 10 kilometers per hour he takes four hours to move with the stream and come back find a distance he rode the boat so uh, a man can draw 14 kilometers in still water so the speed of the boat would be 
14 kilometers per hour and in the stream flowing with a speed of 10 kilometers so we know that the uh, the speed of the stream is 10 kilometers per hour through basic arithmetic we know that time is actually equals to distance by speed all right and here it says that he takes four hours to move with the stream and come back that means that first he goes upstream and then he comes downstream and the total time taken to do so is four hours. So it's quite obvious that the distance would be same in both the cases. So let's say that in the first, when he moved along the stream, the speeds of the boat and the stream would be added. So your total speed would actually be 24 kilometers per hour and your distance was D. So it will be D by 24 plus the other time, the second time when he actually rode against the stream and came back to his original position. So that time would be D over. And because this time he's moving against the stream. So the next stream would be the difference between the speed of the boat and the speed of the stream. And it will be four kilometers per hour. And the total time that he took to complete this journey was four hours. Now you'll have, now we just have to take the LC and just add it. So it'll be D plus 6D equals to four. It'll be, I'll just take it, the, take the space over here. So it'll be 96 over seven. It'll come out to be somewhat about 3.7. Yeah, we have this answer over here. 13.71, this will be your answer. Let's go with the other one. What will be the difference in simple and compound interest in 2000? We'll start with what is the difference in simple and compound interest on rupees 2000 after three years at the rate of 10% per annum. So for the formula of simple interest, it's P into R into T divided by 100. So what's the principal amount over here? It's 2000 the rate is 10 the time is 3 will divided by 100 will cancel these two zeros and our simple interest would turn out to be 2203 will be 600 rupees as for compound interest what we'll do is so the formula for the amount of compound interest not the compound interest in exact is actually you go you multiply the principal amount with 1 plus r by 100 raised to the power t that is your time p is your principal r is your rate at which the money was lent or borrowed and the t is the time for which the money was lent or borrowed so yeah we'll just do some simple calculations it'll be it will be 2000 into i won't be doing the exact calculation it's uh, quite evident because the rate is 10 so it'll be 110 by 100 into 110 by 100 into 110 by 100 we'll cancel these three zeros and we'll cancel these two zeros and we'll cancel this zero in here it will be 121 into 22 121 into 11 to this is 22 and i'll just put how much is it it turns out to be 2,662, but your interest would be when you will subtract your principal amount from this, right? Your principal amount was 2,000. So your compound interest, the interest that you earn on it would be 662 rupees. And the simple interest was this. The difference between the two is 62 rupees. So option C would be our answer. Forms of coins of 1 rupee, 50 pesa and 25 pesa, the number of 50 pesa coins is double the number of 25 pesa coins and four times the number of one rupee coins. Just let the number of coins of 50 pesa, 25 pesa and one rupee or here's what we should do 0 0.5 rupee, 0 0.25 rupee and one rupee. Right, uh, let the number of 25 pesa coins is 2x so 
so that would make the number of 50 pesa coins the double of it there will be 4x and 4x is four times the number of one rupee coins that will be x and what do we have to find out uh, okay so it contains 56 rupees so we have in the form of money contributed in the form of one rupees coins we'll have x the money contributed by 25 pesa coins would be 0 0.25 into 2x and the money contributed by 50 pesa coins would be 0 0.5 into 4x and the total money is 56 rupees so it will be x plus 0.5x plus 2x so it will be 2 and 1 3 and 3.5 x equals to 56 if we just divide 56 by 3.5 what will we have over here just do the calculation really quick will be 16 so the value of x would be value of x would be 16 so we are supposed to find out the number of 50 pesa coins it was four times of x so it would be 16 into 4 so we'll have 64 coins of the denomination 50 pesa the price of seven bananas is equals to the cost of three kiwis the price of two kiwis is equal to cost of one banana and five chikus if ram buys just enough money to buy 30 chikus and how many bananas ram could uh, buy with the same amount all right uh, let's start with the question the price of seven bananas is equals to the price of three kiwis and the price of two kiwis is equals to the cost of one banana and five chikus rambo has just enough money to buy 30 chikus then how many bananas could rambo buy with the same amount so yeah we'll just remove the kiwis because we only have to work on uh, the cost of bananas and chikus all right so to remove kiwis so seven bananas equals equals to three kiwis so one kiwi would be equal to seven by three bananas and two would be equal to 14 by three bananas so it'll be 14 by three bananas is equals to one banana plus five chikus so it'll be 14 by three minus one banana is equals to five chikus it'll be 14 minus 3 by 3 so it'll be 11 by 3 bananas is equals to 5 chikus and the cost of one chiku in term of uh, the banana would be 11 by 15 bananas one chiku is equals to 11 by 15 bananas he had the money to buy 30 chikus so now how many bananas could be bought with the same amount of money so now multiplying both sides with 30 we'll have 30 chikus equals to 11 by 15 into 30 so it'll be 2 and it'll be 22 bananas so he could have a, actually also bought 22 bananas for the same amount let's move ahead with the next question in a certain class 72 percent of the students prefer cold coffee all right 44 percent prefer fruit juice if each of them prefers cold coffee or fruit juice and 48 like both the total number of students in the class is there is no exception then all right so it was 72 percent and it was 44 percent so that, uh, uh, at this point i also assume that you know a little bit about set theory so the percentage cannot be actually greater than 100 percent so we have when we add both the percentages we are getting 116 percent that means that there has been a double counting of 16 percent and here we know that 48 likes both so this 16 right here is actually this 48 right here is actually for is actually 16 percent of the total number of students in the class and this is exactly what we want to find out that is the total number of students in the class so if 16 percent of x is 
48, we have to find the value of x. So x would be equals to 48 into 100 by 16. We'll cancel this by three and we'll have 300 students in the class. Again, a quite basic and a very easy question, but it just required a little bit of practice on different topics. Let's move with the other question. The average price of 10 pens is 12, while 12 rupees, while the average price of eight of these pens is 11 rupees and 75 pesa. Of the remaining two pens, if the price of one pen is 60% more than the price of the other, what is the price of each of these two pens? All right, so the average price of 10 pens is rupees 12, meaning the total amount spent on 10 pens would be, I'll just write it over here, sum of 10 pens. Sum here means the total amount that you spent on buying 10 pins. It would be 120 rupees. Well, the average price of eight of these pins is 11 rupees and 75 pesa, meaning that the sum of the eight pins that you bought is actually 11.75 into it. It would turn out to be, if I'm not wrong, will be 11.75, 875 into four. Into two, it will be it is 94 rupees, and the total amount spent was 120 rupees. So the difference is just rupees 26, meaning that the sum of the amount spent on buying the last two pens is actually rupees 26. Now we know that the price of one pen is 60% more than the price of the other. Meaning if the price of the first pen is X, then the price of the second pen would be 160 by 100 into X. Or I could just write it as 1.6 X equals to write it. it. seems like I've written 106. So let's change it. It's 1.6 X is equals to rupees 26. 2.6 X would be equals to 26 dividing by 2.6 on both the sides. We'll have the value of the cheaper pen is rupees 10. And the other pen was actually 1.6 times of it. So the value of the second pen would be rupees 16. Option D would be the answer in this question. A garden is rectangular in shape. A sum of rupees 1000 was spent to make the land usable at the rate of 25 pesa per meter square. The breadth of the garden is 50 meters. The length of the garden is, in, if the length of the garden is increased by 20 meters, what will be the expenditure in rupees for making the land usable at the same rate per meter square? So a total uh, sum of rupees 1000 was spent at 25 pesa per meter square. So this amount would have been obtained by multiplying 0 0.25 rupees by the area that will be equal, have been equal to 1000 rupees. So uh, I need not write A square because it will be confused then. All right, A. The area would be 1000 by 0 0.25. This will be 1000 to 4000. 4000. Four, and yeah, triple zero is 4000. So the area is 4000, whereas we know that the breadth is 50 meters. And the area is actually equals to length into breadth. So we know that the area is actually 4,000 meters and the breadth is 50, well, the length is L. So it will be 80 meters. The length of the garden is 80 meters. And the question says that the length of the garden is increased by 20 meters. So the new length would be 100 meters while the breadth remains in the same at 50 meters.
the new area would be 50 into 100 which turns out to be 5000 meter square the cost was 25 pesa per meter square so the cost for making the land usable when the area is 5000 meter square so be 5000 into 0 0.25 This would turn out to be 1250 rupees. The answer would be option A. Yeah, let's get ahead with this next question. Ages of mother and daughter is 45 years, so it will be M plus is 45 years. Uh, I should not take five, it will be three variables. So M plus D is five. The product of their age is five years ago was four times the mother's age that time so five years ago their ages would have been m minus five and d minus five and this product is four times the mother's age at that time will cancel m point m minus five on both the sides so the daughter's current age would be nine years meaning that the mother's current age would be 45 minus nine that will be 36 years Quite easy. The answer would be option C. Today is Monday in a leap year. The day after 68 days will be. It doesn't matter if it is a leap year or not. We just have to just form the weeks. There are seven days in a week and each day repeats after the seventh day. So we'll just divide 68 by seven and whatever the remainder is, that will be the remaining days. And we'll add the number of days in this day, that is Monday. So we'll have the current day. Seven nines are, seven nines are 63. So this would be five days, we'll be moving five days ahead. And five days ahead of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, we have to move five days ahead. So it will be one, two, three, four, five days ahead. It will be a Saturday. But in turn, what you could have done is you could have also moved two days backwards. So it would have been a Saturday's win like this. Let's move it with the other question. 